How's it going everybody? My name is Grofano. Welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind. This is part 11. In the last episode, we reached the Urshulaku camp where we were told that we might be the Nereverine. I guess they want us to prove ourselves first and foremost. I, I'm forgetting exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. I know we have to get the Bone Biter bow from this, um, what is it? The Astral Burial. We have to enter this Urshulaku burial site and retrieve the Bone Biter bow. Which I'm not sure if we'll be able to use. I know the uh, one of the people, I think it was who, it was like Nabani Mesa or Zabamund or somebody. I'm sure we can tell by the journal. Let's see here. Hey, he warns me. Okay, so we're trying to get the Bone Biter bow for Sul Matul, and we're trying to get it from his ancestor, Sul Senapool. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, venture into this burial ground and see what we can find. Oh god, no, no, no. Is this going to be another dark ass tunnel where I don't have a torch. Did I forget to bring a torch? Let's see if I have any in my inventory because if I don't we'll probably want to get one. I'm not sure how hard it's going to be. Hopefully there's someone in the town that can aid us. Let's see here. It doesn't look like we have a torch at all. Ah, uh, to go back or not to go back. I'll say we'll venture a little bit further. If it's too dark we'll have to go back because right now I'm not even seeing... Oh my god, yeah, this is way too dark. Alright, let me go see if I can buy it. It looks like we're getting attacked by something. What is it? A rat, looks like? Thinking that's a rat, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna head back to town, see if I can pick up a couple of torches, and we'll head back to this very spot. Alright, so I think the only person that sells anything in this whole Urshulaku camp is uh, Nabani Mesa, one of the, you know, integral people in this quest. But she does not have any torches, and our only other option would be to head, like, all the way back to where we came from which is going to take an absolute long time or I guess find the nearest town and I'm not sure where that would be um, you know anywhere around here somewhere I guess I could look up a map of Morwen what I think I will do is is there an option to turn up the brightness let's see here uh, video gamma correction oh god there's no option Ugh, this is putting me between a rock and a hard place like, it's either take forever to go back and just to get some torches, or it's, um, you know, head back in here and try and brave the territory while it's, like, super dark. I think we'll try to do that, honestly, even though it's going to come out pretty much pitch black on the channel. It's going to be the same thing for me, so I don't know. We'll try and do this, and then I promise you guys I'll get some torches, because this is such a stupid problem to have. Let's kill this Guar, though, really quick. For those of you that have played the Elder Scrolls Online or watched some of my playthrough of it, probably remember these guys when we were in the Mor Morwen section. These are Wild Guar and that's why they're attacking us. Okay, back to the Astral Burial Chamber. Okay, so there is a Gamma Correction and that does like make it, you know, artificially brighter. As you can see, like if we turn it light it'll... So it's gonna look like gross and incandescent, but I think that's our only option here because I'm definitely do not want to go back all the way to a town. Um, so bear with me this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly sorry, even though it's not that big of a deal, but I know I should be more prepared. But we will be next time, I can promise you that. So this is sort of like having night vision goggles on. Looks like we got a skeleton here. I'm not sure how big this place is going to be. Hopefully it's not that big because I'm, you know, my dagger is like half health here and we don't really have that much uh you know dedicated healing options oh god look at this i've like entered a giant chasm and i don't know where i can fall should i just oh uh, let's quick save and then let's just drop down i guess although this is probably a really really bad idea okay never mind it just looks like it's a slope here Okay, alright. Much better than I thought it was going to be. Alright, we have another skeleton up ahead. Who has some arrows here. Try and, like, strafe around him to dodge some of that damage. Come on, dagger. Please hit. Yeah, we're running really low on health, so we're going to have to use our uh, ring of healing here, even though the, the ring sucks. But we will take these viper arrows. Those will come in handy. What is this? Longbow. We already have a longbow, though, don't we? Dark Brotherhood, right, Paul? No. Longbow. Yes, we do. Okay. Alright, let's uh, heal up a little bit. Of course, we have to wait for this thing to recharge. What is this? Some skull fountain thing. Let's head to the other side. I think we do have like a couple of potions. I'm not sure how long that's going to get us. Okay, alright. So it looks like we need to head over there, and I guess we have to jump to it from the skull puddle thingamajig over here that I was talking about. Alright. Uh, this is probably going to be a hard jump, though, honestly, because we can't sprint. Yeah. This is going to be difficult, I think. 
I mean, if I had a controller, it wouldn't be difficult, but since I'm using this stupid keyboard. All right. Is there anything down here that I should be aware of? Probably not. Come on, give me one more use, please. Alright. Let's try this jump again, although I'm going to uh, predict that I'm going to miss it and I'm going to have to cut to where I make it because, it's, you know, since it's on a slope, I can't really get a good foothold. Mm, there we go. Alright, into the Karma Burial. Hopefully we'll have good karma as we uh, journey through here. Know what I mean? Okay. So yeah, as you'll probably notice, torches are a must-have in Morrowind, more so than any other Elder Scrolls game, I think. There's combat. Alright, I'm not seeing what's hitting me. I'm just seeing, like, random white lights, and I think it did quite a bit of damage here. Yeah, this is a this is a really bad situation. I'm going to go ahead and think that I'm probably going to have to... Alright, so what's the dude shooting arrows at me? I see it. Wow, this guy's dealing a lot of damage. Alright, we're gonna have to go into our uh, inventory here and use cheap restore health. We have 15, actually. I don't want to take, I just want to use it. Yeah, I'm not even sure how much this is healing me by. Do we have anything stronger? Fortify luck. Bargain restore health. Restore health 1.5. 1 point? 1 point? 2 points? Alright, let's, uh... I'm not sure how the potion system works in Mormon, but let's try and use like seven at one time, I guess. I mean, obviously you can do the math and figure out what the prime number would be. All right, all right, all right. I can't even see this guy. Yeah, what I'm thinking is going to happen is like, we're just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go get some torches. This is bad. One more arrow and I'm dead. And there we go. Is that like my first death in this Let's Play? I think so. It was, it was inevitable. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna have to go prepare and I'll, we'll journey back to this exact point. So I'll see you guys then. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so what I actually did was I turned the difficulty down. I thought it would just be a better way to go about this rather than me having to take literally like, you know, 30 minutes to go all the way back to a town, find some torches and whatever. So we'll change the difficulty back to normal. Uh, but that skeleton killed me way too fast, man. So I had to turn it down a little bit. So now we are uh, right past where I died. Like I died back there and we killed the skeleton who was over like right there. And uh, now we have to like, I guess traverse these rocks so we'll try our best to do that it's not proving to be too difficult i'm hearing some bats not sure if there are bat enemies in this game i really don't remember at all okay i do see a rat enemy over there though um okay where do we need to go i guess we'll take care of the rat first just might as well kill something before it kills me you know what i mean all right so we're at like the base level difficulty here. Morrowind is a lot more difficult than other Elder Scrolls games. I remember it being like that and it's definitely seeing, seeming like it is like that. So let's try jumping over these rocks again. And I don't really like the potion system in this game. I know there's probably quick slots. I should probably figure out how to do that. Yeah, that would be definitely something that would be worthwhile to figure it out. Okay. Alright, so let's hop over here, and over here, and it looks like there's a body. Dead Adventurer, what do you have? Let's see, looks like he has a Netch set, an Apprentice Probe, not sure what that's for, an Apprentice Lockpick. It looks like that's about it. Uh, do you have like a light shield? That would be really nice. No? What is this? It is light. Okay, this is a light shield. Great. Now we have a shield that is light, so we will increase our light armor. All right. Not sure where we need to go now. Let's take a look at our surroundings really quickly. There's also a little small chest here that requires a lock. Let's see if we can't pick that. Let's use the apprentice. Not sure what the probe is for, but I'm guessing we'll, we want to use the, uh, the lock pick. Lock pick failed. Lock pick failed. And lockpick success. Okay, what do we have? 23 gold. Big freaking deal. Alright, um, let's see. Looks like we have something over to the right there and something over to the... I guess this is our right. The other one was the left. Um, it's all about perspective, though. Alright, let's head up, up through here. I'm thinking this might be the way to go. Actually, what we want to do is probably equip our weapon so we don't die, right? This thing is almost out of charges, and I think it's, like, about half broken, too. Alright, so hopefully this isn't a drop. I think we'll quick save here. Alright, I wish there was a cheat. And I saw a door over there. What, how did I see it? I think, I guess, I don't know. Just something with the lighting. Lighting? Oh my god, this is just pitch black. Ladder's burial. Alright, well, like... <laughs> it, let me just tell you this. If I make it through this dungeon with no torches, that is going to be, like, a super accomplishment for me. 
All right. So, you know, let's keep a lookout for the Bone Biter bow. I'm not sure where it's going to be. Probably at the end of this dungeon, I would assume. Where does this lead? Fragile Burial. All right, let's just keep following the path first. This tiny little rock path here. I guess we would rather want to go up than, like, the thing that was over there. So let's try this one, which is what? The Kefka Burial. All right, and does this keep going? Maybe to another one? Yeah, we're just going to keep going up, I guess. Something is over there. It looks like an urn, I guess. But we'll pass it up for now. Ooh, almost fell down. Alright, this might be our last stop. Or no, I guess it keeps going. Where is this? Kakuna Burial Pokemon. Alright. And this would be our last stop, I think. Looks like we can do some jumping over there for some stuff. Juno Burial. Alright, what do we have over here? Looks like a little skeleton guy. And my screen just messed up a little bit. Like I said, it keeps like switching through the windows. Oh, oh, okay, that was close. Mummy with ash salts and bone meal. I'm not sure how valuable ash salts is. What about this urn that you have here, mummy? Nothing. Thank you for wasting my time. And we have like three more mummies over there. Does this guy have like a mushroom on his head or what is that? I guess it is a mushroom. All right, can we jump back up here? That would be wonderful if we could. Uh, I'm gonna quick save in case I die. Looks like I might have to like go all the way back down again. Oh no, we can just go over here. Okay. Better safe than sorry, right? Alright, I'm going to take a chance and go to the Juno burial. Um, just because it's the topmost one, I think that's where we want to go. I'm not sure about the others. Uh, this might turn into like a really long dungeon though, if it's not in here. But let's cross our fingers. Okay, so far, so not good, because it's completely pitch black. Alright, let's uh, heal up a little bit. Alright, continuing on. So a lot of people, I think I mentioned this before, a lot of people wanted me to do uh, Oblivion's Hidden Treasures, but I, I've kept saying that wouldn't really work, because the locations in Oblivion are like basically the same versions of each other, they're not really interesting. More when I remember exploring a lot as a kid, and you have to think, like, if it was like that in Oblivion, there's no way the technology would be better in Morrowind, you know, the previous game. So, what I'm thinking is it's similar, but I'm not sure. But I, I do remember exploring a lot as a kid. Standard Fortify Magic. All right, we'll take it. I'm hearing some whispers over here. Um, I do remember exploring a lot as a kid and finding a lot of random stuff, but that could have just been me, like, finding quest-related items, not realizing they were, they were quest-related items. So, what I'm saying is maybe... I might do some more Wind Hidden Treasures. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to, like, really look into it. Okay, so, meanwhile... Oh, and another thing is a lot of you guys have asked me to get the uh, Boots of Blinding Speed. I do... What do we have here? Okay, looks like a ghost. Oh, man. Alright. Hopefully this, uh... Hopefully I can get up on my feet, first of all. Thank you. Alright, now hopefully this dagger can hurt this guy. Okay, I think... I think those little explosions are signifying... Yeah, okay, I'm definitely hurting. Alright, so we'll just... I think this might be the boss. It's not giving me a name of the guy. Come on. Come on. How many hits you gonna take, buddy? Hopefully you die before my dagger breaks. That would really be bad. I gotta keep in mind, this is on the easiest difficulty, so this shouldn't be that much of a challenge. But even then, like, he's taking my health down to half. More than half now. Alright, we might have to heal in a second here. Because it heals, like, over time, too. It's not an insta-heal, like, an oblivion. How many hits are you gonna take, man? Please! Alright, let's, uh, let's heal a little bit before I die. Um, and we do have a backup weapon, I guess, a longbow, and we could use the enchanted viper arrows. Okay, let's use, uh, about, around three bargain healths, or whatever this is. Okay. Hope, I wish this was like Dark Souls and I had like some repair powder where I could repair my dagger. This guy's taking an absolute ton of damage here. My dagger's literally about to break. Alright, I think that did it. Wrath of Sewell Centipole. That was the guy that we needed to find, I think. And inside is the Bone Biter Bow of Sewell Centipole. What does it do? Damage agility, 20 points on target. So I guess the point of that is to hit people so they can't run away and you can keep hitting them. Alright. Well, there we go. We got what we were looking for. That's wonderful. I'm glad I went to the into the right door. Um, this isn't Oblivion or Skyrim, so what I'm guessing is we're going to have to go all the way back. These mummies are really freaking creepy. 
Do they have, like, items? I'm thinking this guy has an item. Can we, like, grab it? That would be wonderful. Let's see. Okay, you have the same stuff, but I, th I think we can grab what's in his hand. Common soul gem, scamp. All right, we'll take that. And this guy over here has, like, a potion or something. One of the weapons, and I was talking about exploring um, when I played Morrowind way back when. One of the weapons I remember finding was Mage Bane. And then I think it was like a glass spear or a glass longsword or something. And I used it for like my whole playthrough. I don't know why I really enjoyed it. I think it like did damage Magicka because Mage Bane means like, you know, it's it's it makes mages cry basically. Alright, we'll take the frost shield. I think I'm going to have to do the hard task of like going all the way back. Uh, so I will see you, ladies and gentlemen, at the Urshulaku camp. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I just realized? There is a drop down here that we passed. This might lead us back to the start. In fact, that would be wonderful news if it did. Uh, but it looks like it's leading us into a pitch black thing. So let's quick save again, just in case I fall on my death or something. Alright, again, we'll use the freaking... <laughs> the thing that's behind us as like a reference point. Oh god, this is terrible. Alright. Is there a door here? Ladderous burial. I think that's going backwards, right? Oh, okay, that's where we came out of. Alright. Alright, now I will see you guys at the Urshulaku camp. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I have made my way back to the Urshulaku camp, and I've put the difficulty back to where it was, and I've also changed the gamma back to where it was. There is some combat music going on, but I'm not sure what's chasing me. I don't see anything. It might be that Nyx Hound over there in the distance, but it looks like he's, he's given up aggro. Okay, now we need to go back to Sul Matul and give him his ancestor's bow. Where are you, my friend? I think he was in the Ash Can's yurt, if I do remember right. There you are. Um, you should be happy to know that I have indeed completed the initiation rite. This is my father's bone biter bow. You have completed the initiation rite. I name you Drulani Vinalis, clan friend of the Ashlanders. Keep my father's bow. Yes! And bear it with honor. You are a friend of the tribe, our tribe, and may rest in any Urshulaku bed, but do not harm other tribe members or take their things. And now I will fulfill my, my blah, 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 blah. and now I will fulfill my other promise. Go to the wise woman's yurt, and Nabani Mesa shall examine you and test you against the Nereverine prophecies. Okay, interesting. Thank you, Sul Matul, uh, for giving me your ancestor's bow. I will probably use it. I think I definitely want to see at one point how the bow system is in this game. But this is the wise woman's yurt. Inside should be uh, this person over here, which, I'm yes, Nabani Mesa. Talk. Go ahead. Do you have questions about the Nereverine prophecies? Have you come to see if you pass the test? Do you think you are the Nereverine? So ask about this. Um, hmm. I think we're just going to skip this for now. Okay. Do I pass the test of the Nereverine prophecies? Go ahead, Outlander. I am the wise woman. Ask your questions and I will answer. Okay, do I pass the test? You are not the Nereverine. You are not. You are one who may become the Nereverine. It is a puzzle and a hard one, but you have found some of the pieces and you may find more. Do you choose to be the Nereverine? Then seek the lost prophecies among the, dis the dissident priests of the temple. Find the lost prophecies, bring them to me, and I will be your guide. And take these copies of the Stranger and the Seven Visions. Now I have told you all I know. Go think on what I've told you and do what must be done. All right. Well, what, what are these lost prophecies? There are Nereverine prophecies that have been lost. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the seven curses and others, some are forgotten, some hidden, some deliberately lost. The wise women are the memory of the Velothi people, but it is a faulty memory and we are mortal and our knowledge dies with us. But we hear the dissident priests of the temple study our Nereverine prophecies and record them in books. Such written words never die. You must go to them and ask for these books and bring them what you find to me. Okay, so I guess we have to find some people and ask them about... The Nereverine prophecies and all this sort of stuff that's going on. Um, if what I say is true, you are indeed born on a certain day of uncertain parents. This is part of the prophecy. Alright, so we fulfilled that prophecy. Dagoth Ur, disturbing dreams, latest rumors, little advice, lost prophecies, Morwen, Morwen lore, Nerevar. Okay, let's continue this. A whole bunch of lore. You guys can pause the video and read this if you really want to. This is like getting into too much stuff though. So I think we'll just make sure that we run through everything and pass our, uh, or, uh, update our journal enough. So let's see, Red Burnt Mountain, Seven Curses, Sleepers, Moon and Star, Seven Visions. Jesus Christ, all this lore, man. Okay, I think this gave us a run through of, like, some of the prophecies. Yes, okay. And then it just keeps adding more and more, you know? Oh my god. Alright. I think this is the last thing, and then we're going to be done here. Okay, let's check our journal really quickly so we have some idea of what we're doing. 
Nabani Mace agrees that my aspect, my birth sign, and my uncertain parentage, par parentage, let me, my chair is on my cord here, okay. Parentage fit with the Nereverine prophecies, but that is not sufficient proof that I am the Nereverine. It just increases the chance that we are. She also believes there's some connection between the recent attacks by mad cultists called Sleepers and the Nereverine prophecies. We, I believe we've talked to a couple of Sleepers before. It's the people that accost us on the street. Let's see. Should bear the mark of the moon and star, the mark of Endoral Nerevar's family standard. Can't we prove that? Um, and also this. All right. Well... I'm going to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really have a good sense of direction what I need to do now, but I will take a look online and see where I should be going. We might be doing something different in the next episode, something other than the main quest. Uh, I remember doing the main quest when I played through this the first time, and I also remember that I really liked it. I, def I definitely think it's by far the best one out of all the Elder Scrolls games. I haven't played the first two, but... Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching. My name is Grovana, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, help me out by liking it, adding it to your favorites, and sharing it on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to go the extra mile, go ahead and follow my social pages as well as my Twitch channel. The links are in the description below. Finally, if you want to subscribe and or watch another video that's probably going to be related to this one, you can click the big ol' annotations on the screen. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.